All right, hello. Welcome to another episode of Designs for Zen. I am Riftwing, and today we're gonna to be doing a moon yoga practice. I'm really excited. This is part of a flow sequence that we're learning in my yoga teacher training through Blue Nectar Yoga. And there's a playlist suggested at the bottom. It does have an O and a zero, which is unfortunate, but you can play anything you want. It can be Zen. Um, it does have a My Little Pony a Moon Princess Luna theme as well. If you want to play pony music, go right ahead. I will not be playing any music in this practice. So if there is something that you want to play, go right ahead. Today for our practice, you just need a mat or chair, something comfortable. Uh, you should not need any props, but if you want to have a blanket or anything else, go right ahead. And for today, we're going to start seated. Let's see who else we've got in here. Oh, Hermit again. Fantastic. Welcome. Good to see you guys. We're going to start seated. Moon yoga is a little different. It's meant to be more restorative, slow. Uh, we're still going to get a workout in, so that'll be exciting. And for this one, as I mentioned, it is going to be My Little Pony themed. So as we get started, kind of find a comfortable seat. Roll your shoulders back and down maybe a couple of times just to see how your body's feeling today. Stretch it out. Feel how you're sitting on the ground. Keep that spine straight. And to start, if you'd like, we're going to take a moment to think about where we're at. So you can close your eyes or invite a gentle gaze forward. There's a lot going on right now. Just take note of what thoughts are in your mind. Whether they're good or bad, just watch them. This is actually the way that meditation happens. It's not about clearing your mind, it's about watching. Acknowledge your thoughts now. And as they come up during the practice, take note and then let them go. Don't hold on to anything, just be mindful. Over the next hour, we're gonna let them float away and focus on ourselves. So again, thank you for coming today. And I look forward to sharing this practice with you. The first thing we're going to do to start clearing our mind and focusing on yoga is our breathing. So again, sit up nice and straight, roll those shoulders back, take a deep inhale, and then a deep exhale. One more inhale, and exhale. And now we're going to do some circular breathing. Well, it's not circular breathing, but it's a sequence. You're going to breathe in for four seconds. Hold it at the top. Exhale for four. And hold it at the bottom. And I'll do the counting and do the breathing, but if it doesn't work for you, you'll make it work. So your next exhale. Inhale for one, two, three. Hold two, three, exhale, two, three, hold, two, three, inhale, two, three, hold, two, three, exhale, two, three, hold, two, three, inhale, two, three, hold, two, three, Exhale, two, three, and hold, two, three. Now go at your own pace, whether that's faster or slower. Focus on relaxing with each restorative breath, breathing in, clearing your mind. With each exhale, release any stress or tension this next hour we have together. Focus on your body and where you are right now. One more cycle of breathing. And 
And now you can return your breath to steady breath, whatever is natural for you. If you'd like, you can continue doing this breathing if it helps to calm you as I go through our introduction. So Princess Luna from My Little Pony is the moon side of the princesses. And her job is to find those bad things and make them better, whether they're nightmares or conflicts. And yes, she has her own conflicts, just like we all have our own conflicts. In the episode Bloom and Gloom from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, Luna says, sometimes we can worry about a thing so much, the fear can make us feel like we're trapped in a nightmare. Some would say we're in a nightmare right now but we can't change that nightmare by hiding from it. So let's let go of that worry for the next hour and focus on where you are right now. There's a lot of bad in the world and we can't control much of it. Control what you can. And you definitely can control your body and your health and your mind. And so again, thank you for practicing here. To acknowledge and share our practice, let's raise our hands on an inhale. Exhale, drawing your hands to heart center. Again, this is a mudra, a hand formation. If you'd like it to be a prayer, you may make it a prayer. You do not have to. Just acknowledge that you're here for this practice. You are welcome to set an intention now. Whether it's someone, something. If you don't have an intention, let me invite restoring and renewal as your intention. Take a big inhale and we'll seal it with a deep exhale. Raise your hands up on the inhale and lower down on the exhale. Now let's get moving. Hands back up on the inhale. To the right, exhale. Inhale up. Exhale over to the other side. Inhale up. One more time, twist. Make it as big or as small as you want. Inhale up. Exhale down. This time come up. Place one hand on that opposite knee and do a little bit longer twist, looking over your shoulder. Breathe in here. Inhale up. Twist the other way. Inhale back up. Exhale, fold forward here. And I'm actually going to adjust myself a little bit backwards. If this is uncomfortable, you don't have to fold forward. Just kind of sit straight. Or if it works for you, you can go straight up. Yeah, hands can be wherever is comfortable, whether it's arms on the floor, straight out ahead. Breathe into your back. Feel that breath filling here. Maybe here you roll your head side to side. Relaxing into it. And from here, roll back up on the inhale. Roll those shoulders back and down. Let's do some more shoulder rolls here. I like to do four points. So you go up, back, down, forward, up, back, down. Do a couple more. Feeling the full articulation of your shoulders if that works for you. Again, if there's ever any pain or discomfort, you can modify it or you can just focus back on your breathing. Honestly, you could spend your whole yoga practice just breathing. That's uh, pranayama and many people do that. Okay, come to stillness. Now we got to go the other way. So back, up, forward, and down. You got this. With your breath, focusing on full articulation of your shoulders, seeing how they feel today. One more circle. And now, let's do our neck. Slowly roll from side to side, just front and back. Don't roll around to the back of your head yet. Feel how your neck feels. And the next time your head rocks over to the right, settle it there. Breathe into the stretch. Feel like your ear is reaching to your shoulder. 
If you'd like, you can take that same hand, reach it on top of your head and gently press for a deeper stretch. That opposite hand can go out, maybe reaching over, maybe reaching behind, whatever feels good, just to feel a good stretch in your neck. Breathe into it. Gently release that hand back down, draw your head back up and tick tock to the other side, allowing any cracks or cricks. Breathing into the stretch. Again, you can take that opposite hand up and gently place over. Feel how the other arm needs to stretch in order to get a good stretch in the side neck here. Again, breathing into it. Now release that hand back down. If you'd like now, you can do a full neck roll if it's comfortable. I'm still a little tight. If you remember last time, I had some tightness in the back of my neck. I'm adjusting and not going as deep. Just like you can adjust and find where your body says today, your yoga practice will take you. All right, if you have any other last movements, go right ahead. A couple shoulder rolls. We're going to go into cat-cow. Now, you can do cat-cow seated, or you can do it on your hands and knees. If you want to do it seated, again, you're just exhaling, folding over, inhaling, shining your chest, reaching up, pulling those elbows and shoulders back, and then exhale, and you keep cycling. For those of you that like to practice on your mat today, we're going down. Hands and knees, all fours. If you need to, you can put a cushion, a blanket, or anything else under your knees to protect them. Tops of your feet are down. Knees and hands are underneath your shoulders and hips, shoulder width apart. Exhaling to go into cat. Inhaling, arching your back, looking up and into cow. This time, let's focus on those shoulders as you're exhaling into cow. Exhaling into cat, inhaling into cow, exhaling into cat, inhaling the cow. Feel how their shoulder blades are reaching and pushing. Try and articulate the spine as you're going through. And now you can welcome some movement if you want to swing your hips, twist your back, look from side to side. Whatever your body says it needs today, whether they're small circles or big circles. Remember, if you go one way to go the opposite way for balance. <sighs> Continuing to breathe. All right, a couple more here and then come to stillness. I'm actually gonna adjust this because we're going to do something crazy here. We're going to go into what we're calling gate pose. So you need a little bit of extra space on either side of your mat. We're on all fours. And then you're going to take and we're going to go with our left leg first. So reach it back. Maybe do some hip circles here. One way or the other. They can be small or big. Focus on rotating with the knee and you can flex that foot to give it a little extra stretch then lift it up stretch it back feel those hips how are they doing today okay then come back down center your hips again and then you're going to take that same leg and stretch it out to the side so you're like this now Hands still, shoulder width apart, back foot down. This foot is now to the side and your foot should try and plant. If you can't, that's okay. If you can, try to focus on the outside and the inside of the foot. Stretching here. Now we're gonna raise up again, watch your knee. Feel that stretch. So there's two ways of doing this. One is to stretch over to this side. Breathing into your side here. And then you can tick tock over and go this way as well. You can look up or down, wherever your gaze feels is good. Use your abs and your sides here. On an exhale, raise up. 
Inhale and then exhale to fold over again, doing the side stretch. We're going to do two more rotations here. Inhale up. Exhale over. Couple breaths here. Inhale up. And exhale back over. I know this is a tight one for me. I'm sure it's a little strange. That's a good side stretch and a good leg and hip opener. We're focusing again on those hips and then the moon salutations today. Come back down onto your hands. And now this foot may feel a little weird. So if you want to pull it back in, you can, or if you want, you can actually sweep it behind you and then pull it in. All right. Now let's land back, put our feet in front of us for a second, give these knees a nice little chance to stretch, maybe wiggle your legs a little, or if you want, they call this windshield wiper in your legs. Just give your knees a little break. Now we gotta do the other side. You can say the same way, but I'm just gonna flip over so that way you can see what I'm doing here. Back on all fours, center yourself. Again, spine straight, hands and knees under shoulders and hips, about a shoulder and hip width apart. Lift up that other leg now. First, we're doing the knee circles. Keeping that back foot flexed, keeping your weight centered and your hands and your feet. And then the other way, remember to breathe. And if you want, you can kick back and open that hip a little. You should be looking down, neck neutral. Gaze somewhere in front of your hands. Then you're gonna kick that foot back, lower it down and then stretch it in front of you to the side. Trying to get that foot down. Here we go again. Trying to get that foot down onto the blade of the foot and the inside of the foot. And if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. You can always do it with your knee down too. That feels a little weird actually. Find something that works for you. That's what yoga is all about. All right, so we've got our foot out to the side. Let's start this time and see how different it is when we raise up. First, we're gonna start away from the foot. Okay, you can look up if that feels good. You can look down or you can have a neutral gaze. Weight should be in the back, reaching bent knee and top of the foot, as well as your hands. And remember to keep weight in that other foot that's stretched out. Now, exhale and lift up. Inhale at the center. Exhale, fold over. Feel how different it is on this side. Again, your gaze can go down or it can go up, whatever's comfortable for you. Inhale, exhale. Couple breaths here. And if you're comfortable going faster, feel free. If not, remember to pull up with that upper hand, straightening, using your abs here, and then exhale, fold into the gate. And one more time, pull up and over. Breathing again. Last one up, tick tock over. Feel that stretch. And then pull both hands up and you're going back to all fours. And again, you can swing that foot behind you. Back to all fours. And if you want here, again, just flop right over. Give those legs a little break. That was really good. All right. I'm going to start doing standing stuff, so I'm just going to move this up a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so we're all just sitting here chilling. We're actually going to go back into our child's pose to so come back to all fours. Keep those knees a little bit wider. Toes come together. Sitting back into the pose. You can actually start it here just to feel how your body is putting the weight into your legs and feet. Straighten up and then walk your hands forward. The idea is to keep your hips down as you go into child's pose. Reaching forward, you can lower your head. If your head doesn't go this low, you can rest on your hands or a block or a blanket. You should find stillness and comfort here. Again, now you can breathe into your back. Hands can be forward or they can be back. If they're forward, I invite you to flip your hands over and 
curl your wrists up like you're rubbing a motorcycle. Feel that stretch. That's a computer stretch. That's stretching all those wrist muscles that you're using when you're clicking and typing. It's a good one. Maybe you just roll your wrists a little bit here too. All right, come back to stillness. Now we're gonna go into our down dog. So first thing, keep your hands planted. Tuck your toes underneath. Using your toes and your hands, press your hips back up. And if this doesn't work, you can go under your all fours. You can stay in child's pose. If you are in your down dog, start to kick it out, pedal it out. Feel how this one feels. This is your first dog. Shake your head yes and no. Your gaze should actually be up here and your feet or your knees. Breathing into it, shoulders peel back and up. Weight on all the parts of your hands and palms. Your feet do not have to have the ankles touch or the heels touching the ground. The idea here is to invite length into your legs and into your back. Come to stillness. Breathing here. All right, first we're gonna go into our crescent lunge. So you're gonna lift up one, one foot. I'm using the right foot here. Maybe kick it open just a little bit. I love to do my hip stretch right here. Straighten it back out, step forward. This is a lunge. So from here, if it's comfortable, you can lower your knee or you can keep it back. Whatever works for you today. Raise up those hands using your abs to lift. In crescent lunge, peel those shoulders back, lifting your hands up, and do it. invite a little arch into your back. Put energy through your arms, up to your fingertips, thumbs bracing back, palms reaching together. <sighs> Gaze is up if it's comfortable. Remember to keep the weight into your entire front foot. Knee should not go past your ankle. Back heel is up for me. Again, if it's comfortable for you, keep those hips facing forward. Good. All right. Why don't we lower down to your knee? Okay. This is a little exercise. You want to have some fun here. Inhale, go up. Exhale, just tap the knee and then come back up. Ooh, these are really difficult. If it doesn't work for you, just hold the pose. One more dip. All right, knee down, hands down, untuck your toe. Kick this foot back out. You're back on all fours, back to child's pose. Breathing here. When you're ready, go back to your down dog. One breath here, kick that other foot up. I'm using my left. Open the hips, straighten it back up, stepping it through. Again, you can lower your knee or keep it up, inhaling to go into your crescent on the other side. Slight back bend, hands reaching up, shoulders down, knee not too far forward, hips facing forward. Breathing here. And now again, if you wanna go down to your knee, do a couple little dips. You're welcome. If this is not working, maybe step a little bit closer or maybe your feet need to be a little further apart. Find what works for you or just hold the pose. One more, stay down, hands down, kick that foot back and you can go to your down dog or you can go through child's pose again. All meeting back in down dog. All right. So we are here. Now you're gonna walk to your hands. I'm gonna do these facing forward. We're going into our moon salutations. You've probably heard of sun salutations. These are a different version. The same idea is to get the blood flowing, which is great because we're halfway there. So this is gonna be what they call our peak poses and then we'll cool down. So start off in mountain pose where your feet are about hip width apart. Weight on all sides of the feet. Rock here. Feel how your balance changes. Roll those shoulders back. Palms open. 
gaze forward, her gentle breaths here come to stillness. On the inhale, raise your hands up. Exhale, tip to one side, keeping your hips still, just moving your hands and head. Inhale up, exhale other side. We'll do one more cycle, inhale up, exhale over, inhale up, exhale over. Kind of like what we did earlier, right? Exhale, you're gonna step one foot out, lower your hands, Bend your knees to what's called goddess pose. You can go as low or as high as you want. Shoulders should be back, arms parallel. Feel the power in your back here. Then stand up into five-pointed star. Five-pointed star has both feet wide, weight on your feet, arms out, shoulders back, head neutral. It's like a starfish. From here, we're going to rotate our hips hands are out, and we're going to tip into triangle. So in triangle, generally you're doing it from warrior two and you're taking your hips. The idea is to keep the spine straight. So as you're tipping over, you're keeping it open here. Hand can be on shin, leg, ground. It should be resting. You should be able to move it. It should not be holding you in place. You're using your abs here. And then we're going to rotate all the way forward and we're gonna fold here. So your legs are straight, try not to lock your knees. Weight in your feet, your hands can be behind you or down. You can use a block to help with balance. From here, bend that front knee a little more. We're going into our lunge. We've been here before. Back leg strong, hands down. Then we're gonna use our hands to walk and rotate over into a side stretch here. Wild, huh? Pushing with both feet and hands to the middle into a yogi squat. Using your elbows to push open here. Your feet can either have your ankle, uh, heels up or down. Heels down is more traditional. And then we're gonna go to the other side. So stepping that other foot over into a side lunge here. Rotating around. So you're going to the other side of your mat into your low lunge. Now we're gonna push back up. Straightening that front leg. And if you need to straighten up, that's fine. We're going to go into a forward bend this side. Keeping those knees from locking. Feet forward. Lifting up. We're going to go into triangle. Straight arms. Feel like you are all in one plane. Weight on both feet evenly. Pulling up with your hand into five-pointed star. Let's rest here. This is weird. <sighs> then you're going to lower into goddess. Raise back up. Feet together. Side bends. Okay, we're going to do one more of these. That is a full moon salutation. So back to stillness. Mountain pose. Inhale up. Exhale one side. Inhale. Exhale other side. Inhale, back up. Exhale, step wide, lower into goddess. Inhale, five-pointed star. Exhale, turning around and lowering gently into triangle. Remember not to lock those knees. Keep your hips straight. Focus on your side stretch here. And then rotate fully forward and fold over. Then lower that front knee, bend it. Go into your lunge. Walk your hands around for your side stretch. Come back into your yogi squat. Rest here. Now we're going the other way. So kicking that foot up, side stretch here. Doesn't have to be graceful. Do what your body says you need to. And then walk over for your low lunge the other way. Front knee bent, but knee not past the toe. Back leg still fully engaged. Push into both feet, straighten that front leg, adjust as needed to get into your fold on the other side. Don't lock those knees, but keep your feet straight on rails. Breathe in here. Inhale, get yourself into triangle, however it works for you. Remember, lifting with the abs, doesn't matter where your hands are here. 
Gaze can be up or down. Inhale, pull yourself up. Five-pointed star. Exhale, <sighs> goddess. Inhale, raise yourself up. Legs come together. Exhale, side stretch. Inhale, exhale other way. Inhale, hands down, mountain pose. How you feeling? We'll do one more set, how's that? <laughs> I lied. That one went a lot smoother. Let's do it one more time, bring it back. A set of three, threes are right. They're a good number, right? Inhale up, exhale side. Inhale up, exhale other side. Inhale straight. Actually, your feet are supposed to be together, but that's okay. Go down into goddess, right? I'm ready for that already. Inhale up, five-pointed star. Rotating. Exhale into triangle. Then rotate again. Fold down. Remember not to lock those knees. And then gently bend that front knee coming into your lunge. Walk your hands across. Side stretch here. Come to the center for your yogi squat. All right, halfway. Walk the other way, get into that lunge on the other side. And then rotate, fold over for your high low lunge on this side. Straighten that front knee, lift yourself up into your forward fold. Inhaling up, get yourself back into that triangle. Inhale, pull yourself up. Whoa, hey, five-pointed star, here we are. And then lower in the goddess. Shoulders peeling back, weight on all parts of your feet. Inhale up, feet together this time. Side stretch one way on the exhale. Inhale, side stretch. Inhale, hands up, let's do a forward fold. Keep your knees slightly bent here. Waggle that head up and down. You guys did it. Those are the moon salutations. Great work. If you need to, you can bend your knees as much as you want. Forward folds are not about how straight your knees can be. It's about getting a stretch in your back. Hands can be down or up. I like to grab my opposite arms here. All right. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, let's go back up. And then exhale, fold. Now we're gonna come back to mountain. This is kind of like our home base right now. We're gonna do a couple more poses. We're gonna go into warrior two first. So if we are at the top of our mat, why don't you walk back to the back of your mat? Take another breath here. Step that right foot forward, bending the front knee, rotate the back foot about 45 degree angle, and then open up your hands to your warrior two. Oh, your distance between your legs can vary, but you don't want your knees going past your toes here. Breathing into this, you should be looking over your index finger and the front hand. Exhale, we're gonna flip the front hand, tuck the back hand either to your leg or behind your back, looking up, bending backwards. This is our reverse warrior back bend. And exhale, come back to warrior two. Breathe here. On another exhale, lower that front arm down to your knee. And we're coming into extended side angle pose. Front hand should be up and straight. Weight should be on all parts of your feet. If you want here, you can lower your hand down to the floor or block. This is not needed. You can also do your bind here. Wherever you are, come back to your extended side angle. Go back to your warrior two. Straighten up. Hey, look, at we can do triangle again. Ticking forward, rotating down, looking up. Does this feel any different from warrior two, which is a traditional way? Then come back up. Put your hands down in front of you. Wide-legged forward fold, so your feet still have weight on the outside and the inside. If you need to, put your hands on your hips as you're folding over here. Straight back. Let the head hang loose. Hands can be down at your hips, on your legs, forward, backwards, crossed. Do what feels good for you here. Remember not to lock your knees, but keep weighting your feet. 
All right, we got to go the other way. So now we're walking again to the other side. Let me go back up. Warrior two, other direction. Good job, guys. All right. Flipping your front hand, going backwards into your reverse warrior. Back hand reaching down your leg, front knee still bent. Inhale back to warrior two, gaze forward. Exhale, extended side angle. Front elbow is on your legs. Top hand reaching up strong. If you want here, again, you can stretch down, hand on the floor or block. You can look up or down, whatever's good for your neck. Wherever you are, go back to your extended side angle here. Straighten into warrior T. Remember, keep that front knee bent. Now unbend it, keep it straight. Tick tock, triangle other way. Last triangle of the day. Breathing here. All right. Now, from here, go back into warrior two, last warrior. Good job. Rotating and putting your hands down here. Walking again. One more forward fold here. You can bring your feet in if you'd like your feet in. If not, do what works for you. And then halfway lift. Bend one more time. Use your abs to lift you up here. Bend your knees down to your last yogi squat. Again, move your feet to wherever works for you. Hold it here, breathing. In your yogi squat. All right, now you can either gracefully or not gracefully find yourself in a seated position. <laughs> Great job, guys. That was all of the really engaging stuff. Now we're going to do some floor work for the rest of our practice. All right, first off, let's go back into either our last down dog or our child's pose. So if you'd like, you can go into all fours here. Exhale back into child's pose. <sighs> A breath here. You can stay here. Continue to stretch. Keep those arms engaged. Reaching out with your fingers, pressing into the hands, keeping your hips down. Or if you want, press into the hands, tuck the toes, last down dog. Pedal your feet. Do whatever you need to do in your down dog. If there's any other poses, do them as well. <sighs> Let it go. Big inhale. And big exhale. <sighs> Great work, you guys. <sighs> Come back down. If you're not in child's pose yet, we'll all meet in child's pose. One more breath here. <sighs> okay, use your hands to press back up. And then we're going to flip onto our bum and we're going to do some seated twists. So I'm going to do these like this. I might turn to face you. First, staff pose. So you're straightening your legs, engaging your feet, lifting the toes up. Legs should not be straight, uh, locked knees, but they should be straight. Hands can be facing down, pressing into the palms, or if it feels more comfortable, you can twist them backwards for a different stretch. Straight here, gaze forward, neck neutral, shoulders back and down. Holding staff pose, engage your core here. Feel how it feels to pull your kneecaps up and engage your core breathing. All right, good job. Now we're going to take your right leg, cross it over your left. We're going to do twists. So when you're sitting up, opposite hand across and twisting the body. Breathing here. With each inhale, let it go a little bit. With each exhale, twist maybe a little more. On the inhale, loosen and straighten. Exhale, engage deeper. One more here. Then untwist, and we're going to go the other way. Other leg across, arm open, twisting around. On the inhale, straighten and lift. Exhale, maybe twist a little more. Inhale and exhale. One more time. All right. Now we're going to scooch forward on your mat. So we're going to lay down on our back. You want to do pigeon, you can do pigeon here. We're going to do the uh, other version, which is laying on your back. So figure four. So for here, you're going to take your right leg, cross your ankle over your left knee. Your left knee should be bent. It doesn't have to be all the way in. It can be out just a little bit. Cross over here. 
you're actually going to grab either your hamstring or your thigh, whatever works for you, and pull it in. So if I go like this, you'll see it kind of looks like a figure four, right? And you just pull it in. Keep your shoulder blades down here. Focus on, if you can, that opposite arm is going to be the same arm, actually. is going to be pushing the knee in, ankle staying tight, pulling it all in. Breathing here. Your eyes can be open or closed. Remember on the exhale, maybe you go a little deeper. And then lower it down, but keep your legs crossed. Straighten your arms out. Can you see this? <laughs> I'm upside down. Keep your arms out. And then rotate towards where your upper foot is. So I have my right leg crossed over my left. I'm going to take my legs down to the left and land on my right foot for a side twist. You can look the opposite way to deepen it. Your hands can be out wide or they can be above you, wherever is comfortable. So if you see here, this is what I look like now. Keep that right foot planted. You can straighten that left leg if it feels better. And then use your abs to come back to center. Planting that left knee, taking that right knee down. Woo, good job. All right, let's pull those knees in. Do a little rock and roll here. Keeping your back down if you want. You can rock back and forth. You can pull yourself into a little ball. However, it feels good here. And then we're going to go to the other side. So figure four, other side. Planting your knees down a little bit away from your bottom. Lifting your left leg up, crossing your knee over, your ankle over your knee. Get that number four going. And then you're going to pull it in either by grabbing into the back of your leg in one way or the other. Using this elbow to push into your knee. So it's left elbow, left knee across the right leg, pulling it in. Shoulders on the floor still here, breathing into it. And then when you're ready, you're going to be rotating down. Now it's on the right side, down to the, the leg that's on the floor. You're falling onto that foot for the side twist. Your hands can be out here. And whatever feels good to you, again, to deepen the twist, look the opposite direction. And again, you can straighten that lower leg if you want. Okay, slowly come back up to center. Curl yourself into a ball. Do a couple more rocks. Do what you need to right now. As I finish, I'm making sure we got everything ready for the last part here. When you're done rocking and rolling, stretch those legs out. Lay flat on your back. We're going to go into bridge here. So for this one, you want to kick your feet closer to your bottom. So they're almost touching. Your hands can probably almost touch your feet here. Hands Flat palms down, shoulders. Sink those shoulders and push back with your shoulders and your head. Now we're going to inhale and exhale. On the next inhale, just gently lift your hips, pressing into your feet and shoulders. Feel how that feels. Just a little, just a little. Exhale down. Inhale. This time you can go full lift if you'd like, or you can just do a little pressing down with those feet and shoulders. Try to spiral your legs in so you're actually trying to press your thighs together keeping those knees feet planted if it hurts with your knees you don't have to press in with your legs but it's a good engagement here exhale go down nice work we're going to do one more if you have bridge in your practice you can do that if you want to do a mini one you can do that or if you just want to lay here go right ahead inhale exhale on the inhale lift if you want this time you could use your hands to press up or you can grab them together underneath for a little extra stretch. Whatever works for you. Again, pulling those thighs in, pressing into your feet, shoulders, head, breathing. And then exhale, lower. Whew, good job, guys. Keep your hips neutral just for a second. Feel how it feels. And then if you need to, you can pull your knees in and do some rocking. Maybe you want to stretch your legs doing that windshield wiper motion again. 
If it's in your practice here, go right ahead and you can lift up your feet and do a little, little inversion and a plow if you like, but we're gonna continue with our practice here just by coming to stillness. And we're gonna kick our legs out just for a moment to feel how it is. We're not going into corpse pose yet. All right, raise your knees back up. I like to do one more twist before I go into it. So I'm gonna take my right knee and hold on to it. Kick that left out, lower that leg. I like to roll my ankle here. So that right ankle of the knee that's pulled in, just roll it one way or the other. And then twist it across your body, guiding with your hand here. Keep your shoulders down. Don't focus on the twist, getting that knee across your body. Focus on the, the lumbar, the lower spine twist. And again, that you can look to the opposite direction to deepen the twist. Your body can't always do everything. What can it do today? Focus on doing that. Breathing here. One more breath. And then pull it back up and in. Switch legs, drawing the other knee in, straightening that leg that was just bent. Pull it in here, roll that ankle one way or the other. See if you can't get all that cracking out. And then on the exhale, guiding it over on this side. Again, seeing how far it'll go with your shoulders down. Maybe look the opposite direction. Breathing here. And drawing it back up, pulling it in. Now take both knees in. One last hug here. This time when you plant your feet down, we're going to go into a diamond pose with your legs. So if it's comfortable, you spread your knees wide, bring your feet together so you're making a diamond with your legs and your feet. And they can be out more to get your legs down or you can pull them in as much as is comfortable for you. The idea is it's that last hip opener because today we were focusing on hips. So wherever's comfortable for you. I, when I do this pose, like to put my hands in a diamond as well. So you've got the double diamond going on. This is great. Keep your hands whatever's comfortable for you. And we're done with all the hard work here. This is our last opener. Feel where you're touching the ground. Both in your hips and your back. Maybe you release that back a little bit. Are you still holding it tight? Shoulder blade. Where are they touching? Arms, wrists, hands. All the places that you're touching the ground. Feel them. Go deeper. Breathe in here. A couple more breaths. You can stay here as we go into Shavasana, the final resting pose, what we call corpse pose. Or if you'd like, you can stretch out your legs, do any last movements you need. In corpse pose, literally, you're just gonna lay like a corpse, keeping your legs stretched out, hands out. If you wanna continue grounding, palms down. If you wanna get energy, palms up, facing up. Everything's touching the ground here. Maybe rock your head side to side a couple more times. In corpse pose, you will have silence if you have no music on. There will be a time where I will not speak, but I will call you out of it, so don't worry. You're not going to be left laying here all day, I promise. Close your eyes. Focus on absorbing the benefits of your practice. Relax any muscles that are tight. Relax your eyebrows and the space between your eyes. Relax your mouth and jaw. Let that tongue get away from the roof of your mouth. Relax your throat. Relax your chest. The deep inhale and exhale. Relax your shoulders, elbows, wrists, and fingers that have held you up throughout the practice. Relax your belly and your back. Feel your tailbone and hips. They've gotten quite the workout. 
Relax your knees, your kneecaps, your ankles and your toes. Feel how your body is reacting right now. Take a deep cleansing breath in. And now I'll give you a few moments of silence to enjoy. Again, if any thoughts float by just like at the beginning of practice, acknowledge them and let them move on. Sometimes we can worry about so many things. Right now, let go and let them pass. And take these last few moments for yourself to feel the calm and peace. Remain relaxed, staying in this pose as I read one last thought for you for our moon yoga. In the episode, Do Princesses Dream of Magic Sheep? Princess Luna enlists the main six to hunt down a magical force that was turning dreams into nightmares. This creature, the Tanibus, they realized, was feeding off of Luna's guilt. And the Princess of Friendship, Twilight Sparkle, and her friends rallied around her, telling Luna to forgive herself. With her friend's help, Luna was able to move on from her past. She let go of her fears and her guilt. You must do that, too. Let go, just like the thoughts that are passing you by. Any fears or guilt from things in the past will not help you, will hold you back. So go forward. There's an anonymous saying that goes, no amount of guilt can solve the past. No amount of anxiety can change the future. Take the peace that you gained from this practice and move forward. Work to do good, to be yourself, and to do what you can. It will be enough. You are enough. Begin to deepen your breaths. Slowly start to stretch out your fingers and toes, bringing motion back into your body. Rolling your wrists and ankles. On an inhale, stretch your hands up above you and you reach your toes for a big full body stretch. Before slowly rolling to one side, resting here, 
taking a couple breaths, honoring the in-between from your practice into the rest of the day. And on an inhale, slowly find your way to a seat, keeping your eyes closed or a gentle gaze. Roll those shoulders back, take one deep breath in, and exhale. On the inhale, draw your hands up, reaching together overhead. Exhale, drawing your hands back to heart center to close it the way we started, focusing back on your intention. Take a few moments here to reinvigor your intention. Repeat it in your mind. Take a big inhale and exhale. And then one last big inhale and let it all go. Raise your knuckle thumbs to your forehead to thank yourself for this practice, your center of wisdom. And I also thank you for practicing today with me. I wish you the best on your way forward, finding peace. You are enough. We are enough. We will continue this together. Deep breath in and exhale. I bow to you and thanks for this practice. Namaste. Thank you all for this practice. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with even more knowledge from my yoga teacher training. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day here. Thank you, everyone.